Pretty much once I've decided that something is a good idea, even if the idea is completely ridiculous, I am 100% committed. Whether that's cutting the front end of the car off, designing a completely new rear end, I'm committed, I will do the research, fail, overcome it, and figure out how to make that goal possible because once I've decided I want to do it, I really want to do it and make it happen. What is going on guys? Charles with TRC back again from Denver, Colorado. We are at a very, very special location. We're at an airport shooting one of probably the coolest cars I've ever seen in this world. I saw it at SEMA this year and I actually shot it about two years ago and we're finally meeting back up again. I've got Cam right behind me with his 8.6 that was featured in SEMA this year. This thing is absolutely insane and he built it all himself. Let's check this build out. My name is Cameron Kokalis. This is my Toyota 86. And this all started when I was about 16 years old. I kind of fell in love with the wide body bag scene of the Toyota 86 from kind of 2012 on. And I started saving for the car. I'd always been saving for a car, but at about 16, it was like I was saving for this car. And by 17, I had saved enough money to buy the car. I bought the car, kind of started with wide body, bags, wheels, my dream at that point of what I wanted to do. And then in 2019, I actually had the chance to go out to SEMA and it really just opened my eyes to what the Battle of the Builders competition could be, what Toyo Tread Pass could be, and just the craziness that you can go with a car. I came home, I, I really got into gaining more knowledge uh, gaining basic skills like fiberglass, ABS, plastic fabrication. And then about when I moved off to college, when I was 19, I got this shop, I bought a welder, and that's when it really just took off. I, I taught myself to weld, I built the roll cage, and from then on, it's been just a steady climb of my knowledge, my skill, and what I've been building. Dude, this thing is a work of art, and I don't think there's any other way to put it other than just a complete work of art. So if we wanna get into the basic drivetrain here, Definitely. we have uh, LS3. Okay. It is a standard LS3 crate engine, but it's the 525 horsepower variant. Okay. So it makes a, uh, a bit more horsepower there. It is made into a Tremec Magnum F, okay. and then it has the S1 sequential conversion on it. It's a manual shifting sequentially instead of a dog box. Okay. Yeah. That's really, really cool. And I'm also noticing all of the fabrication that you talked about. Can you tell me a little bit about what made you go this route with this entire front end? Yeah, so originally I was only supposed to go shock towers forward and you kind of start getting into it, you draw some sketches and then it just really gets out of hand from there. <laughs> so I was like, you know, it makes the most sense to just connect it back to the cage. Why not? Why not just go all the way? Right. So I drew up this sketch 
I built a jig off of the original suspension components and then cut the entire front end off, bolted the jig back on, and then recreated all of the new suspension mounts, moving some suspension around, moving the wheels around to fix some issues that I had seen with the car already being a wide body car to kind of counteract that. Right. You know, how, how old were you when you cut the front end off? I think I was 19 when I cut the front end off and built the majority of the chassis. So being 19, cutting the front end off of your first car that you've ever bought, how did that feel? Well, so I'm a person that can really commit to something and know that I'm gonna be able to follow through, figure it out and build something out of it. My parents, not the same feeling, <laughs> but no, I, I, I did it basically the day after I did the sketch. I was committed and I knew I was gonna make it happen. Um, yeah, no, nothing but excitement. That's awesome. Really man. no fear. No, no regrets. No, no, no regrets. That's awesome, man. Yeah. And th had to have that much confidence with a build like this, that takes guts and that takes a lot of smarts as well. I think we should take a deeper dive in a little bit. Yeah. But for right now, I'd love to go for a ride in this thing because yeah, I know a lot of people on the internet, yeah. there's been a lot of talk on the internet about how this car doesn't run. It doesn't yeah. have a, no doesn't wire, have a wire, harness, harness. No nothing. Yeah. yeah, it does. It runs, it drives, and we're going to prove it. Well, I think the first step to that would be starting it up and getting a sound clip, Let's right? Do Let's do it, man. to one, yeah. brother. Hell yeah. yeah. Let's go for a ride. and drives under its own power confirmed it's yeah. so good and it sounds well, once it catches the scream the, is it, just that's the only way to describe it it's it a scream it's like a nascar it just starts screaming i feel like i'm yelling right now by the yeah. way I, it's like it's deathly quiet right now compared to what it what like just, your ears feel weird right? yeah yeah it feels weird this is wild and sitting in this interior too like it's this the is, coolest interior yeah. like i love this interior with the all, all the panels e even just if you look back here the craziness that go is going on back there dude all the brake lines and everything mm -hmm. being all hard oh this is all hard line yeah, yeah. 
I forgot about that. This doesn't have fluid in it. Yeah, I ran out of the soft line section, so there's nothing going to the brake calipers, so that's why there's no. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just there for show, for yeah. now at least, yeah. right? For yeah. now. Well, that's crazy, man. That was the big well, question. It runs and drives on its own power. I think now we need to go back to your shop and really take a look at where this car started and actually take a deep dive on this car. And I really wanna give you guys here on TRC a deep dive exclusive. This is gonna be the most in-depth review of this car out there on the internet. So stay tuned, you're not gonna to wanna to miss it. basically told me that if I wanted a car, they weren't buying me a car. I had a lot of entrepreneurial businesses. I used to do action sports and I'd like cut down scooter decks for little kids. I, I did all sorts of stuff around action sports and, and like building skate ramps, building out like lobbies for different businesses, just to, to generate money for this dream and to make it possible. For my whole life, all we did was mountain bikes. I, I was taught how to lube a chain, take it apart, put it back together, but it was mountain bikes. And then when I found cars and when I found the complexity of cars and the level that you could take it to, I kind of went out on my own and developed my own skill set and knowledge in a completely different path. After the basic build of the wide body and the bags, after that, it was the cage. So I built the cage, completed the cage, and that's when you actually shot the car last. Probably the three week period that the car had the cage and the wide body done before the front end was cut off. At that point, it was a stock FA20. Then pretty much right after that, it was chopped apart and there was no engine in it. Chopped the front end off. I had built a jig of all the fender and suspension mounting points, chopped it off, put the jig back on, and then began plating off the frame rails and recreating the full structure of the front end of the car. The other thing is all of the sheet metal and like bracing on this car was cut with angle grinders. Anybody that is complaining about how they don't have enough knowledge about CAD or anything like that, you can do it by templating with cardboard, cutting with angle grinders, and being very methodical with how you're planning and how you're making sure that all the math works out. Right after the front end, I decided to cut out the back end. At that point, it was a cage attached to a front end. Cut out the back end, and I was getting kind of confident in my, my skills. And that's when the cantilever suspension came into play because I just wanted to push myself that much further to learn something more mechanical than just fabrication and welding. After the rear end was done, I just made sure to tie everything together. So I have the tubes tying front to back, tubes tying from front to cage, just to make this very cohesive structure throughout the car. The rear end of the car has trailer tubs built into it just to house the wheels. And then once the chassis was done, going off the trailer tubs, a lot of sheet metal work. Sheet metal work to tie the floors back into the tubes. Sheet metal work to build the completely flat, beautiful firewall. All the removable panels, aluminum panels throughout the car, and the dimple die plates and everything to tie the chassis into the car and just strengthen it and make it beautiful even more. After that, that was kind of the point where I was like, wow, these parts are a lot of money. That the, the goal that I wanted to take the car to, the parts were a lot of money. So I really focused on writing the best sponsorship proposals I could. I wrote a ton of sponsorship proposals. They were, they were very long in depth and sent them out to all the sponsors I have now. And as those companies slowly started getting on board, I got the engine together. I got the engine management together, the wiring, the fuel system. As more sponsors came on board, the build progressed. And then that's what kind of led me up to the point that the car was running and driving. All right, guys, so we made it back to Cam Shop up here in Denver. And this place is pretty nondescript, I would say. Yeah. Um, there's nothing really like marking it as like a shop. It's more of like a storage unit, you know, yeah. which is exactly what you described it as. Um, so let's peek behind door number one. <laughs> So this is where the magic happens. And obviously you got something right here, but we're gonna talk about this here in a little bit. But tell me a little bit about how this shop came to be and the story behind all of it. 
Yeah, so when I moved off to college, I got this shop because I was living in, in an apartment, um, about 450 square feet total in this first bay, had it for about a year. I put the lift in it. It is a fairly skinny bend pack lift that really made it possible to build the car. This shop started out really simple. There was, I didn't own any tools at that point. And o over the years, I, I picked up a welder, both MIG and TIG welder. I picked up a, like a press brake, bead rollers, and a bunch of other tools, and just kind of built this shop out to the point that I could build a car of this caliber here in this shop. And honestly, I even sprayed the car in this shop. Really? So if you look at the floor, you can see like here, that was kind of the original color. Um, but yeah, the whole car was sprayed in here uh, from the point it was sandblasted on. Once you had started the build, you, yeah. I'm guessing you quickly realized you needed a little bit more space for all the storage of the parts and everything like that. So you ended up buying this other one over here, right? Yeah, so, well, actually, I rented that one. You rented that one across the way. The way okay. It doesn't have any electricity and it was way cheaper. Just filled it with stuff. And then when I had the chance to get this one when the tenant moved out, okay, yeah, yeah. I went ahead and rented this one a little over a year ago now, I think it was. And it really just completed the space. So just a quick rundown of like my fab area. So got a variety of different grinders and belt sanders, uh, drill press, belt saw, um, press brake. This thing made a lot of the sheet metal work on the car possible. And then this is kind of my workbench uh, tool area. And then this vise. This vise is probably the best tool that I own. It's an old machinist vise bolted to a stand that I made and I use it to bend stuff, use it to hammer stuff. Wow. It is amazing. And then right here, I usually have my tube bender okay. bolted down. Okay. And then kind of as we move through here, got my welders staged and then a lot of the heavy duty like big metal equipment such as my rotisserie my engine hoist engine stand mm -hmm. and a lot of other stuff like that and then back in this area it's mostly just storage and where i keep my 86 most of the, so the time. 86 goes right there yeah now that it's finished that's where it lives very nice well i think we should get it out of the trailer and yep. park it in its home and then we can talk a little bit more get it up about on the lift, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can get it up on the lift. Check out everything that has been done to that car. I'm talking everything. I told you guys earlier on in this video, this is going to be the most in-depth overview of this guy's car, and I'm going to deliver on that. So let's go get the car out of the trailer. We'll pull it in the shop, and we'll give you guys the deep dive. So the car is up on the lift and I cannot tell you how excited I am to come and look at this thing. So we're going to start up here at the front. What can you tell me about this massive chassis mount splitter? Low car scrape a lot. Right. My thing is that I like to have my splitter mounted to the chassis. So when you scrape, it doesn't push the bumper up. It doesn't do anything like that. So what I've done here is I have a tube running here with bolts directed into it. And then I have another tube here with more bolts. So this whole thing is just against the chassis. And then I have it set up so it has a little bit of flex up front okay. so it doesn't get like high centered on stuff. Right, right. And it, it's, it's this uh, 3 8 inch ABS plastic, so it's nice and slippery for like sliding over speed bumps oh, and yeah. that oh, type of stuff. Yeah. So moving on, I, and, and then you yeah. mentioned this bar right here. I, I, I remember on a lot of S chassis, they have what's called a power brace. Yes, very, very similar power brace setup. So it's not super necessary. The stock car had a little brace here. Um, but I just didn't want to leave this just free hanging for torque reasons. Right. So I built this extra brace, stiffened it up quite a bit, but kind of moving through here, you can see the LS3 from the bottom, mm -hmm. got this Siki manufacturing oil pan that is specific to the FRS subframe, very unique shape going on there. And then you can kind of see from the bottom how simple the belt assembly is. So I literally just have an alternator running on a single belt. That's wow. it. Yeah, just an alternator. Everything else is electric on the car. If you really get up in here, you can see the bottom of the header, the supports to the engine, everything up under there is kind of the most exciting part up here. Wow. Personally, I know a lot of people 
have problems with LS engines because they're too common, but I love LS engines. The simplicity, the power per dollar, and the ability for you to showcase fabrication and welding work because the engine is so simple. You can take away so many components that you can basically just have an engine block running inside of a car with all this fabrication and welding around it. And that's really what I wanted this car to be because it is a portfolio. What I can do at this point in my life, what I can bring to the table. And it was kind of my debut into the automotive industry because I, I wanted to do it that way. This whole car is running on FDF fab angle kit. Now, is this a kit that you can buy or is this something that you guys kind of worked on together? So it's a little bit custom. Um, mine is a little shorter and kind of reworked a little bit to my chassis so it's less aggressive. But something interesting that I actually did, there's now two mounting points for the tie rod. This inner uh, mounting point decreases the steering radius and it is an angle kit mounting point. The outer, I added so that I have a more time attack street style steering setup. So it's not so aggressive and shaky. Right. It, it, it tightens everything up. And then when I wanna pop it back from, I can literally do it from the top since it's a tube chassis, mm -hmm. then I'm back to a drift angle kit. Wow, so quick change yeah. and just ready to go. Yeah, and I set it up so it doesn't even uh, mess with the alignment. So this bolt to this bolt, the distance is the same. Wow, Yeah, that's crazy. And you also have some adjustments here on your steering rack. That you yeah, so that, that also plays with a little bit, but I really just focused on that bolt hole for alignment purposes. The oil pan kind of has this custom cutout for the steering rack to go through, all my lines to go through. I have a little protection plate under here. But because of that, I relocated the oil filter so it's super easy to access. Because this car is so simple, everything is just basically lines coming out of the engine. So I have two lines for each coolant port and then they converge here. So these are the coolant lines. The, I don't remember which one is the inner and which one mm -hmm. is the outlet, but they come around the engine then they converge here. And the length of the yeah, car all the way back. so just for protection reasons, I had a pretty thick aluminum hard line here. Mm -hmm. And these are all vibrant lines. They have the vibrant weld on fittings and it makes it super easy to do a setup like this. You remember you said you couldn't remember which ones were which? Yeah. You actually labeled them. Did I? That, of course I did. <laughs> of course I did. <laughs> oh, I love it, man. I love it. This is a TR660, so a Tremec Magnum F. Nothing really special there. I have a McLeod Racing clutch. And it's all, it, I did it with Granis Racing. They helped me set up the whole thing. Works beautifully. It's super easy to drive. Highly recommend it. And then just stiffened in the brace here for that. Right. All poly mounts, all super simple. Mm -hmm. Very nice. And then uh, drive shaft, you're running in something custom? Yes, drive shaft shop, aluminum drive shaft. Didn't want to go with a chromoly one because they're heavy. Mm -hmm. uh, carbon fiber didn't seem necessary because the car is only going to make about 500 horsepower. Right. And then the exhaust, see. this is really cool. So it's an oval. Yeah, four inch oval. So four inch drops down to four inch oval and then splits to dual three inch. So from this point back, it actually gains volume. Wow. And then you just got the dump tubes right out the back. I have the dump tubes right out the back just because it almost acts as a muffler when you use the ground. Since because of the sound clips, mm -hmm. it is ridiculously loud. I, I cannot get across to you guys on camera how blisteringly loud yeah. this is. It's like a banshee screaming in your ears at it's like... beautiful. It's so beautiful. Continuing on to the back of the car, so we have the diffuser right here that I'm looking at, but we'll touch on this FDF as well. So you, yeah. you have it running on front and rear. Um, and so is this also custom as well? And I'm noticing so, you have two different colors. Yes, so if you look at the subframe, I did a fade. The okay. subframe fades in the middle from silver to black. And then we powder coated the arms alternating. So silver on this side, black on this side. Um, these three arms are, you can purchase them right now. The upper arm was something custom that I worked with them on to create a full kit for this car. And it really just makes everything super cohesive and work together. But I, I also want to talk about the stuff up in here because you can see my air suspension system oh, right yeah. here. Oh my gosh. So it's just tucked away. Yeah. So here's the management system. Here is the compressor and then there's the tank. And then if you kind of come around here, I have a super simple relay system running everything back here. And it's under this panel, just really simple fuel filter. And then my water pump is actually up here. Wow. 
It's just chilling there. It's just chilling there. <laughs> and then if you pan kind of around here, right you can here. see the rear mount radiator. You can see the radiator right there. Pulls from the bottom sort of like a trophy truck. Mm -hmm. Really interesting configuration, but it actually works really good. Keeps the car under 200 degrees. I was running at 6,000 RPM for part of that just to get it to scream. And yeah, keeps it nice and cool. Stayed nice and cool. God, man. Everything under here is as clean, if not cleaner, than everything on yeah. top. Like, this is Thank really, you. really, really cool. Um, look like you're running stock diff. It's actually an IS300 diff. So, an IS300 diff is a stock bolt in diff to the factory subframe. So, I took the subframe, I stiffened it, and then I put an IS300 diff that I welded in, and then just thousand horsepower drive shaft shop axles. I don't think you'll be breaking those anytime soon. No, no, not with 500 horsepower. I also want to touch on the wheels and tires real quick. These are meaty, meaty boys right here. Yes. So what are we running on the rear? 315, 30, 18s R in the rear. R888 R's. Best tires in the game. Best of the best. And then 265, 265 35. In the front in the front shout out toyo so moving on to the back of the car you can see you have this amazing diffuser that you made yourself yeah all made by me i believe it's 095 aluminum okay. has all 095 bracketry so aluminum is really hard to bend if you don't know my press brake cannot bend aluminum that thick wow so that's where the brackets come in yeah they just got like yeah little just really nice brackets super nice countersunk hardware and the whole thing just kind of blends in and then the big thing is I love my tube clamps. Mm -hmm. So the whole thing is mounted with these tube clamps and a very substantial solid half inch bar to the like crash bar section mm -hmm. of the chassis. I kind of took inspiration from FD, mm -hmm. uh, Formula Drift, and the way that they do their crash bars. So if they're hit, they can pivot and it doesn't rotate or twist the chassis. Mm -hmm. So that's what the bolts are. There's two bolts on each one. So if they did get hit, it, the whole thing could pivot. Right, right, absolutely. Well, I know there's more to look at this car, so let's take it yep. down a little bit and uh, we'll check out the rest of what is in the back of this car real quick. Um, because I know that's probably one of the coolest parts about this yeah. entire build. Let's go ahead and pop this rear trunk real quick. Got these handy little hood pins tied back into the chassis. Mm -hmm. Super simple. Dude, and then here we the, are. the piece de resistance right here. I'm gonna tell you right now, this is what I have been waiting to see. So the cantilever suspension set up with the airbags, that is wild. Tell me how you develop something like that. You, you have to build a prototype first. So what I did is I built a basic structure just to kind of hold the tubes where I wanted them to be. And then I actually fixed the pivot points, built everything out of plywood. So you, you have a plywood rod going down here, a plywood triangle, and then you can use a shock with no spring on it. You test the motion of it, make sure for the stroke of the wheel, you're getting the stroke that you want in relation to whatever your, like the distance that your shot can be compressed before it bottoms out. And you posted a lot of this on your Instagram. Yes, all on my Instagram. There's a lot of clips of me jumping on it and <laughs> testing the prototype and all that. So the bags themselves are actually very unique. Um, at, at the moment I got these, nobody really made a bag with a dual eyelet in this configuration. So I had to kind of finagle some parts together. This part is off of, I, I think my old, bags off the original car, if I'm correct. I shaved it down so that it fit in there. This part, I actually bought the bag from Airlift and then just kind of put everything together, cut it all down and just made it fit in the system. It's yeah. wild to see all of this engineering. And do you have a background in engineering or? Completely self-taught. That's that's the craziest part about all this, man. And, and no background in painting or no. fabrication, nothing. Yeah. It's honestly amazing what you can do with watching YouTube videos, practicing and being willing to fail, overcome it, and then better your skills. I love that, man. I love yeah. that mindset. And that truly speaks to this yeah. th this art right Thank here you. in front of us. Like there's no other way to put that is yeah. that it's, it's freaking art. I'm flabbergasted, but <laughs> we're gonna continue on because there's so, still more to talk about. Yeah. Um, so we got the radium right here. Radium fuel system. These are one of my sponsors, amazing guys. This is a surge tank setup. So there's a surge tank in here, uh, one surge tank pump, one lift pump to the engine. So basically if the car were to be in drift or something, there's a surge tank to keep a certain amount of fuel compressed, ready to go to the engine. So that's what's back here. You can see the radiator better, the fans. Then there's actually my expansion tank up under there. It's also a swirl pot expansion tank. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
That's really, yeah. really, and really you can sick, see the, man. Uh, subframe fade. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's where the that's where the color comes into play right here. So it's silver, and then goes to black. And but then you also have silver on this side and black on that side. Yeah. I love. That's such a cool little touch, man. There's so many different things on this car. Yeah. I'm freaking speechless right now. Like I don't. It's so much to take in, Thank and you. it's it's freaking. <sighs> Continuing. Okay. Well, <laughs> we, we can go to the brakes. Okay, so we'll go here. we'll go to the brakes right here. So actually before we talk about the brakes, the I wheels. want to talk about the, the freaking wheel. wheels. Ah. What? Yeah, what so are we looking at right here? This is Workmeister S13Ps. I custom built them. These are seven and a half inch lips, the biggest lips that you can get from work. So I basically just got the faces mm -hmm. off of another pair of wheels used, custom built them with the lips, and then moving to the brake calipers, dual four piston. So one set is for the handbrake, one set is for the foot brake matched with the fronts. Big rotors to go with that. And then these crazy, we are likewise titanium lug nuts, which actually also have a spike that can go on the end. Really? But that was a little much. <laughs> so we're, we're sticking with this. Yeah, that's a really an interesting touch to put on the back. I mean, they're, they're extruding and they're pointy and sharp. Yeah. And it's a really interesting detail. I like that. It's like a little bit of personality. Yeah. And obviously you have a wide body kit on it. It's the Rocket Bunny V3. Rocket Bunny V3. Um, the bumper's not on it right now, okay. but there was some custom work done to fit the stock FRS bumper with the Rocket Bunny V3. Okay. So I built custom extensions and everything for that. While we're on that, we can just kind of go over basic body. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, little carbon fender garnishes there. Craft Square carbon mirrors. These are sick. They I are love the way they look on unique. this car. Yeah. Um, then kind of moving to the back, clear toms. These were red. I custom built them with clear lenses. These look sick. The trunk has a carbon duckbill. This is super rare. It's a V3 duckbill, but they actually made it in carbon. So wow. it, it's a very special piece that I was happy I was able to get. And then there's a massive hole cut back here for the radiator to push air out. It looks at home like that, that hole. It looks like it was it meant to be there, no you know? Hole. <laughs> yeah, this is crazy. So, I, and my favorite part about the whole trunk setup is that when you flip it up, the license plate looks the same. It just looks just like that. Okay, so now onto the interior. So you can see there's a lot of tube work in here, basically going from the front all the way to the back and reinforcing the chassis. There is a lot of bead rolled uh, sheet metal work in here, uh, tying everything back in because I actually left the stock floorboards. It was a decision I made just to keep the car a bit simpler for my first big tube chassis build and then just kind of tying it in and utilizing the stock floor to help me. Um, there was a full eight point FD spec roll cage in here. It is fully tied in, X braces everywhere. It's pretty crazy. Um, a lot of gusseting on this cage. I know a lot of people like the dimple dies. And then onto the dashboard. Again, it's the same type of aluminum I used on the diffuser. So all bent aluminum panels, welded this up, blended it all to get it super smooth. Super simple button orientation here. I don't have a key to start this car. You just press a, a combination of buttons, but they're not labeled, so joke's on you guys. Yeah, don't steal it. Got the Haltech Elite 2500 down there. That is the engine management system for the car. Anti-gravity ATX30. That battery weighs four and a half pounds, and it powers the whole car. Speaking of weight, I know this car has had so much strip from it, but you have a lot of metal in this car. So what, I mean, have you weighed this thing? Yes, so I put it on some scales a couple months ago. It weighed 2,808 pounds, which it has over 200 feet of tubing inside of the car and a massive LS engine. And the fact that it started as an automatic, it weighed 2,806 pounds. So it gained two pounds with 200 feet of tubing and a massive engine. That, I think that's a feat in and yeah. of itself. Triple like the that's, horsepower too. That's crazy. Yeah. You can see the sequential here. There you go. I got a custom bezel here. It has my handbrake, not currently plumbed, but there's my handbrake. Airlift controller, very simple little entertainment unit here. <laughs> if you would call it that. Right. Fire extinguisher, just for safety down there. As you do. Haltech IC7 dash. This runs all of my displays for the whole car. Let's me monitor everything. Tilton uh, balance bar pedal box. I love this pedal box. It is all converted to hydraulic. So there's no brake booster. There's no nothing. It's just all simple hydraulic underfloor 
uh, master cylinders. That's really, really dope and really clean too. Like that's yeah. just super simple and it looks really, really nice in the car. As for the steering column, we have a chromoly shaft inside of another chromoly shaft <laughs> essentially. And it has little quick release on it. Got my steering wheel hook up there. Nice, nice. That steering wheel looks really cool. What, what? Yes, again, We Are Likewise, one of my sponsors. Got my name on the We Are Likewise steering wheel. And then you kind of got the uh, barbed wire going around it. Love that. That's super sick, man. And then just to wrap it up, Recaro RSGSs. I liked them because they had the gray on the shoulders. And then Knight Runner International X Williams harnesses which just kind of tie all of it together. Yeah, man. And then uh, moving on to the back of the car right here, there's a whole bunch of panels in the back that yes. just really tie the whole rear end of the car together. And then also some people are wondering, I've seen this in a lot of comments, why don't you run a rear windshield? So my radiator fill and expansion tank is right under here. Okay, so right under this panel right mm -hmm. here. So you have to have access to that mm -hmm. and you can't run a... I also just don't like it. I really? think it looks cooler because you get the view of the bead rolled panel going on in mm -hmm. here, the custom wheel tubs, the big triangular structure here mm -hmm. that is essentially the duct mm -hmm. for the radiator from the bottom. Right. And then you can see all this more clearly with the bead roll and uh, hardware. Yeah, and you did all that bead rolling yourself? All of the bead rolling. I, I can show you the bead roller, it's over there. That's wild. Yeah. Downstar hardware throughout, there's hundreds of pieces of Downstar hardware. Thank you, Frank. <laughs> awesome hardware. Uh, I, I know Vibrant helped you out a lot with this car Vibrant as well. Vibrant helped me out a lot, yeah. So I see all the sponsors here on the windshield. Is this all of them that helped you out on the build? So this is all of them. I got the Vibrant here. I believe there's nine here. The anti-gravity sticker is on the inside. Toyo and then Siki Manufacturing. Okay, That is nice. all of the sponsors. And I'm incredibly grateful for all of those companies for making a car of this caliber possible for a 21 year old. Here, the intake is actually flipped backwards and I have my air intake pulling from a custom air box through these four gussets. So I know this is rather unconventional, but the reason I did this is to make this beautiful header possible. This header is very high and it takes up a lot of room in the front. It also makes a lot of heat. Because of this and because of LS engines being technically symmetrical, corner to corner, you can actually just flip the air intake and I just ran it back. I've had no problems with intake air temperature and it keeps them super cool and it allows me to build this crazy header up front. That's, uh, which is a, a feat in and of itself, yes. but we'll touch on that in a sec. So you also are running everything behind the firewall right here. So like the throttle body and all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. So what's the reasoning behind all that? Same with the reversed intake. So you have the throttle body going here just because that's the way it pulls. So it pulls through there and then down to the pedal box. It is like a cable, not a wire. Um, and then like a Texas speed, simple intake manifold, radium fuel system again with the regulator, a lot of custom parts on the engine to make it look how it looks. And then like you said, the wiring. A lot of people don't believe initially that this car runs. We proved that it does, but it does indeed run. And it I took, my eardrums, I took a tremendous amount of time to tuck the wiring around the block, through the back of the block, and then under the throttle body. Wow. So if you look really tight in there, you can actually see the coil wires going through yeah. a grommet. And then actually underneath that, on each side, I have the each bay of wiring. Wow. And then the only wiring that you would be able to see is the um, injector wires, which I've just zip tied and tucked underneath the fuel rail. So clean, man, so Thank clean. You. All right, now let's move on to the crown jewel of this entire masterpiece, these eight to one equal length headers. How is something like this possible for a kid like you? So there's this kit called an Ice Engine Works kit. They're these little snap together blocks and they're each an inch. And what you can do is I bought a full kit. I built one entire side of this header with these little plastic snap together blocks. They allow you, even on turns, to get the exact length. So I could rebuild and rebuild and rebuild this whole section to get the pipes aesthetically to look how I wanted while also getting them to the 33 inches within 16th of an inch on every pipe on this whole thing. Wow. 
So it's true equal length. It is true equal length, and that tool is really what makes something like this possible. You can, you can do it, but it, it helps. This roof is cut out, so we have the, it's kind of like you can pull it off, like a target top style yeah. thing. Um, and then the windshield is like Lexan. Okay. I built the windshield, I traced the old one, cut it out, and then bolted it down. But that's kind of what is encasing the front of it. I love the exposed hardware on all of this too. It kind of gives it more like a steam, steampunk kind of yeah. vibe. Ties the whole car together with the wide body and everything, yeah. And then you can also take off all the panels um, yeah. and, and run like basically exoskeleton, if you will. Yeah, it's a lot of rock chips, but yes. Right, right. <laughs> My advice for the next generation of kids getting into cars, start where you can start. Whether that is working with fiberglass, you can get that from Home Depot, ABS plastic, start there, gain that skill, and then work up. If you have a single skill, you can gain more skills. So once you get that skill, do a bunch more research, get more knowledge, gain another skill. Just keep building to the point that you could build something like what you see behind me because I'm a person, you're a person. There, there's no difference in what we can achieve other than you have to have work ethic, you have to be, you have to have ingenuity, and you have to want it really bad because none of this stuff is easy and none of this stuff is just gonna be handed to. You have to find a path and then go for it and make it happen. That's pretty much what I would say to up and comers. Shout out to all my sponsors that we showed earlier. You guys are really what made this car happen. I was fortunate enough to have a list of the absolute best companies in each category to make the highest caliber car possible. And I am just so excited to have them on board for more cars in the future to see what we can build.